Hey, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Wake Up Late with Dougie Show. I am your host, <clears throat> Dougie Almeida, coming to you live from Simpsonville, South Carolina, where I'm blending in every day. Uh, great show for you today. Uh, regular on the host, uh, regular on the show. We'll be joining us and a brand new person that's never been on our show in one of Greenville Comedy's uh, rising stars. <clears throat> uh, this gentleman uh, actually took him to open me a couple different times. Uh, very funny. So we got a great show. Without further ado, let me introduce <clears throat> back on the show, Andy Gunnan and first time Chris Wilson. What's up, fellas? Hey, how's it What's going? What's going on? Well, first of all, welcome, Chris. Uh, Thank you. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Uh, uh, Andy's has been has been on the show, but to our, our viewers and listeners, uh, Chris is a, a funny fella here in Greenville. Uh, this Thank is a you. newer comedy scene. A lot of uh, newer comics are here. And uh, here's a fellow that uh, can definitely get some laughs and uh, I think has a big, bright future. Uh, Thank you so much. Absolutely. And we all remember Andy from the Thor, Fat Thor podcast. And, of That's course, right. uh, comedy uh, from Atlanta area. So uh, welcome, guys. Thank you. This will be um, fun. Now, uh, absolutely. Um, you know, it's been it's been crazy, you know, uh, two things. It's always nuts. Like as a comic, you know, we write, we try to get stage time. You know, uh, it's just amazing how many things people think we just go up on stage and tell sh jokes and shit. They don't realize that there's so much more to it. Now, Andy, you've been doing this for a little while longer than I think than Chris. Chris, how long have you been doing this now? Uh, I want to say about a year and eight months. Yeah. And that's like that. amazing where he's at and, and where are you at, Andy, on the timeline. Uh, just over three years. All right. And, uh, of course I'm in my 16th, 17th year. <clears throat> so that means I should be a lot funnier than I am, but <clears throat> nevertheless, uh, you know what I mean? Um, you know, it's, it's amazing. So, you know, a year into it, Chris, let me ask you, um, sure. what, 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 what do you think some of the hardest things about this? What, 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 do you, what, what is it that, that when you wake up and go, fuck, you know, this comedy thing, this is, this is the hardest thing for me to deal with. Yeah, um, when I first started, uh, well, when I did it the first time, like 11 years ago, I was pestered. Everybody's like, my cousin's like, hey, come out to this open mic and do this. And I put it off for a couple of years. And I said, if I do it, will you leave me alone? She said, yeah, yeah. And I go <laughs> and I did it. I, I burned the light, which if nobody knows, that means when you go over your time, I did like seven <laughs> minutes because I'm staring at the ground. I've got like eight Grand Marriers running through me and I've only suited for two. And, uh, you know, and then I got done and then I'm like, never again. And I disappeared and I decided to come back because I have a bad stage phobia. Not anymore. Like now it's gone. I used to be like that guy that would just fake a heart attack in school because I don't want to read the paper in front of everybody. <laughs> And they go, Chris, I don't know how you do that. You know, how do you get up there? And I'm like, getting up there is easy. It's the being funny part that's hard, you know. Yeah. And uh, writing jokes is like uh, for the last two months, I think I might have written two jokes. It just the the valve is just turned off. And I'm just like, oh, you know, it gets rough. There's a lot to it. Like, yeah, I have. I don't think I like. I don't think I picked up a pen regularly since I graduated high school. And now I'm like trying to write all these things and you have to write jokes and like hope, hope to God, nobody on the whole planet has already thought of this. And that is almost impossible. So that's true. Yeah, that's some, that is, that is very true. Andy, it's a very true. Thing. Um, for me, uh, you know, it's, uh, now that I, I'm doing it pretty much full time now, um, I don't, I, pretty much walked away from the building industry after 2020 my wife just says do this permanently and i was like "Ooh, i don't know if that's a good idea but anyways but yeah it is hard but it's not it's like you know in sales when i used to sell building material it's every day you get up the score is zero and you just try to find something somewhere and i mean i think the, the difficult thing for me right now is i'm at a spot where i'm featuring uh all over the country with the bar comedy usa and a few other folks and it's hard to find feature work for me right now because a lot of clubs uh, are requiring, you know, headliners to bring their own feature or, you know, they don't supply the feature. So that, that gap to be able to, 
jump in there and get more work is very hard now because you, you get a lot of work you start getting a lot of open mics and you start hosting everywhere and you're getting a lot of stuff and all of a sudden you start working in that feature spot and you're starting to get, and I, everybody goes um yeah we're bringing our own feature and there's yeah. no speech <laughs> so it's it's like dang you get to, you get all the way to here and then go bam right against the wall <laughs> Yeah, because it's a great point. Because when you when you are the feature or the opening act for the headliner, uh, you know, especially when COVID came and the shutdowns and the you know the limited uh, capacity and the limited uh, you know uh, seats being sold, you know, a lot of comedy clubs are like because you know, comedy is so big now. You know, a lot of comedy clubs. Why why am I going to bring a feature in from another place, give them a hotel and everything, where I could probably just find a a local comic, especially if it's a good comedy scene like in Atlanta or you know Phil, you know in these great scenes, they have a lot of locals that they could probably use. Oh, or, you know, uh, you can find a couple people just to do 10, 15 minutes each. And, you know, in some cases don't even pay them. You know, a lot of times comics that are at that stage won't even care. Like, Oh shit, I get right. to do 10, 15 minutes. So yeah, right. it's a hard, you know, it, it, there's limited spots, uh, for a feature. Yep. In other words, um, you know, it's like for me, it's the same challenge, obviously, you know, that's why it's great being here in Greenville because, you know, I'm taking advantage of that aspect. You know, they don't want to bring in co right. features from out of town. Yeah, they, they, why don't they just use, you know, it's basically a handful of us here in the area that can feature, you know, so they just rotate us in when they need it. You know, hey, you know, I live 15 minutes from the club. I don't need right. a hotel. So yeah. uh, definitely exactly. a good point. Uh, definitely exactly. a good point. Yeah. And even if you offer like, hey, man, just give me a chance. I'll pay my own way. They're like, mm, I feel more comfortable bring, using somebody here or let the, you know, yeah. or let the uh, uh, headliner bring their own. Yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's crazy. Now, speaking of comedy, by the way, uh, did you guys catch Chris Rock's new comedy special? Yes, I did. I did not. I have yes. not. Yeah. I'm such a bad TV watcher. Well, it yeah. just came out Saturday night, so you're not, you're yeah. not too far. Yeah, I'm not too far <laughs> behind. Like Everybody wants to watch it for the obvious reason, you know? And yeah. I'm like, okay, I'd like to see that, but like, I don't know. I'm weird. Like since I started doing comedy, it's kind of hard to watch it. If that makes any sense. Cause like I watched, yeah. um, for example, um, Eric, Eric Myers, I believe at, uh, I want to say the laugh factory watched 45 minutes on YouTube and it was 45 minutes of just complete gold. And I'm like, Oh geez, I, I need to quit comedy today. <laughs> you know, so, right. I'm a little weary about it, but I think I've heard good things. Yeah. So, uh, it's funny you mentioned Eric Myers, who I've known because being a Florida comic, uh, don't ever compare yourself to that, to that guy. He was just, he was, I mean, he was, he was just one, one in a million, you know, it's uh, unreal. Just like pure he, goes, energy. he went from zero to 11 and stayed there. And I'm like, Whoa, this, this guy's entertaining. And he, he was one of the first comics to make me laugh on a comedy special. And I, I laugh so much. I'm just like, yeah, I can't, I can't do, I, I wanted to throw my notebook in the trash. Yeah. So you know, and, and, and it's true. The greatest thing I always loved about Eric Myers was I always love a comic that if you, if somebody was to take his material and try to do it themselves, it wouldn't even work because his man, you know what I mean? Are, in, are great. It was just so true to yeah. who the hell he, he was just such a character and, you know, that, that's the kind of thing. And you're right. You know, I don't like to watch comedy and certain things because I don't want to like subconsciously come up with something. And then a month later, go, yep. oh, you know, I got an idea for a joke, you know, and then not yep. even realize uh, that, that's always been a concern of mine. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, you know, uh, you know, you don't want to just you know, I want to watch this. Uh, I caught a few of the clips of it. You know, I am a staunch hater of Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith at this point. <laughs> I've made it known Agreed. that I will never spend a dollar to watch that fucking asshole or his, or his Agreed. piece of shit wife ever again. Uh, or any of them. I won't, you know, I've made that post on, on Instagram and somebody called me racist and all this shit. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, you know, it, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, he smacked a black guy who I love Chris Rock as a comic who I'm, I'm a, yeah. and, and a brotherhood with. And, you know, so I don't, you know, and I don't, I just don't condone any violence. And the big part is a, as a tough guy, like, you know, I've, I've like, look, I'm five, I've always, I've, I've always, I've never been six foot. I've been in my, you know, I'm five, eight, five, nine. I'm starting to shrink. That's the age I'm at now where I'm actually losing height. Um, <laughs> but you know, I was, I've been in the martial arts since I'm four years old. So, you know, it was always my duty 
you know, to stand up for the little guy under situations. And I would, I would, I would, I would just, just abhor these big, tough guys who would always, you know, pick on the smaller guy oh, yeah. on purpose. Oh yeah. You know, like they knew they could mouth off, but they wouldn't mouth off to another big, you know, but he, he was no. a great example. Will Smith would not have done that. Right. He would have not have done that to a comic that he, that he would worry that would have fucking knocked him back out. Right. Right. You know, I agree. Well, you know, in, in, okay. Chris Rock made a good point. You know, he's, he'd been trained to box. He'd been trained in all these movies to fight and all this stuff. And he's like, I've been trained to do anything. <laughs> But, yeah. you know, realistically, I don't think Will would have done anything if he hadn't been pushed. Mm -hmm. I think he would have just sat there and let it ride if she had not said something, yeah. whatever she said or looked at him, that look. And then he realized he had better do something. But realistically. He, he was on the spot on TV right. and he just panicked. Right. Yeah, I watched this. I watched a clip from Damon Wayans because somebody there was an article about how, you know, Chris Rock just spent a little bit of time on that. But Damon Wayans did a whole special about about uh, Jada. And he goes like, mm -hmm. she, like she put voodoo. Like everybody just thought she rolled her eyes, but she was doing voodoo. Like, <laughs> you know, right. and of course, right. fucking Will Smith was laughing at the joke at first, right. and then he, you know, that's true. Right. And you know, and 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 then th then that woman. So that's why you know a lot of people don't like her. You know, because I mean, and, and in a sense, you got to feel bad for Will Smith too, because here's a guy who got you know, like I think it was in the special. Like he, they're on. Like, first of all, who talks about getting cheated on, and then who goes on fucking. Right you know, goes on, goes on public display to be interviewed by the bitch that cheated on you. You know, exactly. I mean, fucking like what a putz, you know, like, it, like how good can it, her pussy be? How good could that it, pussy it, be? Where you, you know what I mean? I mean, uh, Jesus. He's been, down been on television. Down. <laughs> he's been beat down and put in such a bad spot. And she's, she's just, like you said, she's putting some voodoo. She controls him and she just has totally wrecked him down to, something you know he he never was yeah chris have you ever have you ever had pussy so good that it made you just leave your 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 your, your disciplines and just make you do stupid things yeah yeah and and it worked out about the same you know i'm probably banned from the academy awards too you know, uh, I can't even watch Fresh Prince anymore. Not even yeah. Uncle Phil can make it happen. Uh, and my grandma peace, called me. God bless her. My mima called me and she goes, you know, because she's like, hey, you're a, com you're a comedian. Are you on TV? I said, no, mima, I'm not. And she goes, well, don't let anybody hit you. And I'm like, well, I've got cerebral palsy, so they'll think they already got me. It'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, could you imagine? But yeah, but that was the whole thing. Everybody was all nervous that this is just going to give the gateway to any yacht drunk Yahoo to come up and smack us there for the last year. You know, everybody had to make a statement. It's like, don't, don't even try it. <laughs> well, what yeah. it did do, what it did do is have a bunch of opening acts and hosts use that joke. You know, don't come yep. up here and smack me. I'll beat your ass. Or, you know, it was, it was a good right. way, you know, to kind of, and, and it got the laughs. It should be because, and you know, I think that's gone. Can't really do that yeah. anymore, but it had its moment, no. right? Yeah, it did. Uh, it did. It, it did have its moment, and you know, I I thought it was what, what I thought was amazing was that Chris Rock. I uh, watched a clip where he fucked up a joke, and yes. um, you know, he mm -hmm. fucked up a joke. He messed up the punchline because he said, "I guess the, you know, uh, uh, concussion was a movie that uh, <laughs> that fucking Will Smith had done or something." He fucked up the punchline. I, I, I'm just really surprised that you would have that on your special. You know, like like I would cut that shit out, like. You know, how could you fuck up a joke and leave it on your special? Well, you know, I agree with that to a point. You know, no, I've never really seen that because, you know, they normally tape them twice and then they just cut out the the bad and splice in whatever was different or messed up. Um, but, you know, I give them credit for letting it fly. That that got my attention right off the bat. Yeah. I was like, wow, they they let he let that go. You know what? That's. You know, I don't know if it speaks volumes or if it just says, you know, hey, you know, he's like, I'm I'm not perfect, you know, because realistically, yeah. he wasn't doing a lot of stand up until Will smacked him. Then all of a sudden he hit the road hard to get this together, to do his special, to do this, I guess, response special is what you would call it. Yeah. Um. So, you know, I, I was it didn't bother me. It didn't bother me. I was just like, kudos for you for leaving it in. Yeah. It's kind of like when a live a band's performing live, and you hear the, the missed notes and shit like that. It's kind of part of it, part of right. enjoyable. Um, you know, 
Uh, all right. Well, you know, and, and when it comes to comedy, you know, like I said, congratulations to Chris Rock for handling that all extremely well. Yeah. Taking the high road. And, uh, and better than I would have. Oh, yeah. I'm, listen, you know, people have asked me, what would you have done if he slapped you? I, you listen, I would have beat his ass. And you know <laughs> what? I mean, I would have. Because yeah. if any, there's never been a time in my history where somebody struck me. And I, well, I, I, I'll lie to you. There was actually a time I was surrounded by several black guys in co- in high school. And it was I was actually watching a fight between a white guy and a black guy. I was about to break. You know, I was just hanging out in the background. Some guy sucker punched me. And I'm like, well, I'm outnumbered, especially when I turned around and the three friends I had disappeared. And I was outnumbered like 20 to one. Uh, I think that may be the only time I was actually struck without, you know, uh, reciprocating. But, uh, no, I, and that's funny because I love visualizing shit. Like I picture me being up there going anyway, next. And, you know, I would have low kicked that bitch and just jumped on top of him and choked his ass out. It would have been a whole different uh, Academy or whatever it was, Oscars, whatever it was. But, uh, you know, like I said, uh, Will Smith to me is dead. Uh, I don't, I think he's ruined his life. I don't know if he'll ever, listen, I, I he personally think that I don't think this, I think this is a never come back from, uh, I mean, it may take a long time. You know what I mean? Mm. I think, I think Harvey Weinstein will come back quicker than Will Smith will come back. Ooh, yeah, you'll, you'll see, you'll see Harvey Weinstein producing a movie before. Well, so here's the thing, who the hell is going to hire Will Smith, you know, to be like, I don't think anybody, like you said, uh, the, the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, that, that show that's on Peacock, the remake, nobody's watching yeah. that fucking thing. You know what I mean? Nobody's watching. Nobody, anything that's associated with him, uh, it's done. So, hey, uh, speaking of, uh, of things, let me ask you guys, um, uh, should uh, this is big news, you know, and everything that's going on. And listen, when it comes to the LGBTQ community and the transgender community, I say, if you're an adult, do as you wish. I have nothing against yeah. anybody in that sector. My nephew, my, now my nephew is transitioned once she reached. I have a, a nephew who's gay. So it's, listen, I, I am not like this old, oh, my oh, oh, fucking God. For, no, no, do whatever you want. You know, I'm not going to judge. Who am I to judge your life? But leave the fucking kids alone. You know, I started to think of this analogy. Comedy sometimes is about breaking into analogies, you know, and somebody posted something when I, you know, got into this thing on social media. It's like, you know, what are you, what are you against story time with, you know, with trans, with drag shows? I'm like, I don't have any problem with a drag queen reading a story as long as the story isn't about how Bobby sucks dick. You know, I, right. I don't, you know, and, right. and those types of stories, you know, if they're reading a regular traditional story, I can care less. But it's almost yep. like it's not much different than when the tobacco companies, or these, you know, these uh, vaping companies used, you know, candy flavors to entice children. And if yep. any, nobody, nobody on earth is going to, is not going to be, uh, uh, it's going to be oblivious to anybody that you're trying to entice children, A, because they're so, you know, because it's, because they are so impressionable. And, you know, if you get a, tra- you know, somebody with a fucking wig and glasses and all that kind of shit, you know, all you're doing is trying to entice the kid, you know, it, leave the fucking kids alone. You know what I mean? Yeah, stop making kids them. political pawns and and all that. I agree one hundred percent. Don't make kids political pawns. But if you want to take them to story time with a crossdresser, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that as long as you know if that's your decision and it doesn't turn into. And as long as it's not happening in the schools. And it, I think the couple of places that I saw it was at a public library or a bookstore, and and it was mostly people had the choice to take their kids. That's fine. That's your decision. That's your kid. You know, but I agree with you. You know, when you start using kids as political pawns and things like that and entice them to make decisions, maybe they would, you know, I don't have anything, any issues with anybody on either side of the fence of anything in, until you start bringing kids and making them political issues or pawns or whatever. Yeah, I think they should just let kids be kids. That's mm-hmm. all. You know. It's not, it's, you know, I've made this argument before. If any parent that lets their kid make that type of irrevocable decision should also allow that child to have power of attorney on the finances of the family. And they should also be signed over health surrogacy. So if the parents got into an accident, a nine year old can sign a DNR to get rid of their parents and collect the life insurance money if they're so capable of making such uh, drastic decisions. Um, Mm -hmm. But, you know, no, again, no. And the funny thing is, is when you read these misleading articles all the time, it's like, you know, enough of this bullshit. Like 
you, you, and here's the here's the biggest problem of it. And this is my advice to the LGBTQ trans community: if if you want to set yourself back decades from progress that you made for equality and all that, then keep fucking with the kids. And whether you're right or wrong, America is not going to tolerate it. You know, what I mean, it's just not going to be right. tolerated. You know, if you want to if you want to set yourself back, keep fucking pushing the kids to do shit and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's like there's no difference and it has nothing to do with trans. Oh, you're transphobic. No, I would be if my buddy told me he took his eight year old to a gentleman's club. I'd be like, what the fuck? What are you like? You know, what are you crazy? Exactly. You know what I mean? It's like, what's wrong I mean, with if, you? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm not going to, you know, and, and if somebody tried to somebody try to post something that, oh, what's the difference between going to a drag show and what, having the kids watch the Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders? Well, it's a big difference. The Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders are doing pom poms and they're cheering for the team. They're not walking around with a strap on cock and fucking tassels on fake titties. You know what I mean? And this kind of shit. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, let's be honest. And listen, if you if somebody asked me this about Hooters, uh, you know, well, the kids, the parents are bringing their kids to Hooters, you know. Well, listen, you know, a pair of fucking shorts, dolphin shorts is a bit different than a G string, you know, with balls hanging out. So I don't know. Uh, the next question should should parents. This has been a recent story, too, uh, that there's some laws being passed that if a child asks to be considered he, she or transgender or considered gay and stuff like that, and they open up to the school, does should the school notify the parents? Uh, you, know, you know, that's, you know, here's the thing. I, I mean, if, if a kid wants to talk to his teacher, like, hey, I'm gay or maybe gay, I mean, that's a conversation between them. I don't think, in, I mean, unless the teacher wants to make it a, a thing, that's between the teacher and decision and the parent, but I don't think they should have to legally go, hey, your kid told me this, so I have to tell you this. I mean, maybe the kid's just practicing telling that teacher to become comfortable talking to them to go tell their parents. But I don't think, I don't think the schools, schools should not get in between parents and their kids realistically. And right. like but if, you know, and, and I, I had a relationship, you know, with certain teachers that were, you know, I was close with, and sometimes I'd say some things to them. I may not say to my parents, but they didn't go run, tell them. Now, They'd go run, tell them if I didn't do my homework or if it, you know, anything that was life threatening or anything like that. That's one thing, you know, I don't think they, I mean, that's between, I don't, I don't, I don't know where that came from, but that's just a decision, unfortunately, that this should be left alone. Because if I think, I think Andy's going to admit, I think Andy's going to finally admit that he banged one of his teachers in in school. (laughs) No, (laughs) no, no, I did not. No, no, uh, I did not. My buddy did. (laughs) And then yeah. married her after he graduated. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. Be- well, that, that never made the news, but this was back in the 90s before everything. That must have been some awesome homework. Um, <laughs> I, I mean, I agree. Listen, first of all, I think if you, like, I, I taught martial arts, right? And, you know, a lot of times the kids would go to the martial arts instructor before the yeah. parent because it's a different, you know, that was, that was a unique position we had where we can reach, you would use that relationship differential to kind of really tell the kids like you could tell the kids to be disciplined and you're not the father or the mother telling them it because then no, don't tell me what to do but the martial arts that you know the martial artist that the sensei would tell you to do something like oh i'm gonna listen to you know instructor Doug, right, yep. right? so you, you so but as a responsibility if i'm a teacher and some some kid comes to me and opens up and tells me i'm like hey thanks for sharing that with me listen i'm not i'm gonna keep this between you and i because that's a gentlemanly type thing and that's a but i am going to suggest that this should now that you've told me you really should speak to your parents yep. and you know and give right. them the opportunity uh don't keep this bottled up they should know and i think it's best if you make it out and that i think that the idea of hiding it from parents is the issue you know like you know the teachers think they have the high right. ground and they're gonna oh look we we know better than the fucking parents and that's where the issue becomes anything we, you'd like to add you? to that chris um I just think that, uh, well, like I I have some gay friends and I know they had, excuse me, they had a rough time coming out to their own parents, even some as grown adults. And that's the thing, like, uh, I could see like talking to it, like you said, to kind of like get it out to somebody, but I don't think uh, the teacher coming and just going, Hey, I need to tell you about this. This, this kid may not be ready. Uh, to do that or something like that. And, you know, that's just, I think that's overstepping a big boundary because 
like I said, I've, I know grown people that are, that still don't want to talk about these things with their yep. parents, even if their parents yeah. are aware of it. I just, right. there's like, there's some things that a teacher just can't do. I mean, it, it may be if they were like, Hey, can you help me tell somebody, tell them maybe, but I think that's stepping way out of the teacher bounds. Yeah, I, I I agree with that. I, I don't think it's necessary mm-hmm. for the parent where the teacher or like you, like uh, Andy said, where the, they'd have to be forced to let them know. You know, I, I, I don't think that any medical procedures should be done without the parent's knowledge. Uh, that's a different story. But when it comes to the kid's life, I think the, the, the teacher should then take that moment and basically say, look, thank you for sharing. I'll keep this between you and I. But my suggestion is you have to. And, you know, I, I have a close friend that recently told me something similar too that their, 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 their child, an adult came out to them and the kids in the, 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 the child's in their thirties and, you know, and this person's very Christian and stuff like that. So they're having a hard time with it. And then, you know, that falls in the responsibility of the friend where I'm trying to tell my friend like, Hey, you know, it's there, you know, I mean, what can you do? I know we, you know, then it's our job to tell them, Hey, you know, you may have to get over this. You know, you, you know, it's our job to kind of, console that parent now to say, look, you know, I mean, love them either way. You know, they may be confused who, and you, you got to help them. They, you don't want them to become a boundary between you over this. So, uh, I think, I think ultimately it's always up to, you know, uh, for everybody in involved, uh, to make sure they handle it responsibly. Right. Uh, right. to that point. Um, uh, all right. So here's the question. The big question came out. Now there's more and more evidence and the belief that COVID did come out of a, a Wuhan lab, <laughs> basically that handles that. I mean, did anybody, did anybody believe the fucking bat story? I mean, no. you know, you know, Never. I, I wanted to, I wanted yeah. to. Yeah. It, it, it would have been a lot cooler. It would have been a lot cooler. Yeah. Cause it's like <laughs> Spider-Man, a spider bites you, you get superpowers, the bat, whatever. And it's like, how did I get my cerebral palsy? Like what bit me? So that's like why right, I'm right. more entertained with that theory, but <laughs> yeah. 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 Chris exactly. caught, Chris caught cerebral palsy cause he got licked by a fucking coyote. And then yeah. all of a sudden he started walking. <laughs> right funny. in the ass. Is that right where, in the ass. He licked his ass while he was from? taking a shit in the woods. <laughs> yeah. It was a weird time <laughs> in the Denny's parking lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, well, you, like, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, it, it, you know, I, I'm not a virologist. I'm not a doctor and anything. But when all this shit was going down, you know, everything from that to like natural immunity, you know, again, people like, you know, like, oh, it's does it like what the fuck? That's why a lot of this country doesn't trust the fucking government. And, and, and you know, it's like, you know, don't tell me that I need to get a fucking shot when I've had it twice. Don't tell me, you know, it's ridiculous, you know, but, you know, it didn't come from a fucking bat. You know, nope. And they're, and they're, you know, if you'll go look, they Forbes and Newsweek came out um, and published, and there, there's several articles published that give the timeline of what all happened and what Fauci said and Fauci's emails that have finally come out that he actually helped suppress and write the the dictation to say it came from and got the, and I, yeah. I can't remember the guy's name, but I can pull it up in the article, who's now head of the WHO to basically curve it around to avoid the lab information to come out to say that it was a bat and an offspring of SARS, which was totally false. And now yeah. that's all out there. Well, and Fauci, Fauci was culpable. And, you know, I, well, I think pat- if anybody, his, his, his name is on like 18 or 20 patents of the, uh, of, of the medical stuff and the, uh, drugs and in the shot yeah. in the pharmaceutical companies, he was making yeah. money off of every shot that went out. Yeah, and and he didn't feel the need to disclose it. So, um, right. I'm I'm just glad now. Uh, I'm just worried because China's getting so aggressive now. Like, oh, you keep fight. They warned America uh, this week that if you know we're on a path to to confrontation if we don't if we don't straighten our ass out, which is kind of funny. But um, you know, uh, it, it gets into the whole Ukraine thing and this and that yep. and. You know, and I, I was great. I did watch uh, Donald Trump's speech at CPAC. Where he says, listen, if I was president, it'd be over in one day. And as much as that's, you know, Trump speaking, there's part of me that says, you know what? It might, you know, because because listen, 
again, people don't like to hear this, but there was no, everybody thought he was going to create World War III because he's an ass, he's crazy and all this shit. There was no fucking, if anything, quite the difference happened when uh, old uh, shaky bones in uh, blab- blabbermouth Biden came in the, in the picture, who, by the way, fell on the stairs again. Uh, this is number eight. And this number eight. Are we count? Are we keeping count? Is this eight or ten? I lost track. He fucked. <laughs> he he got. The, he was talking about. Oh, they opened my head. Check if I had a brain. I mean, this guy is a fucking <laughs> babbling fool. You know what I mean? I mean, come on. How much? What's gonna? What's it gonna take? I mean, it, wouldn't it be funny if all of a sudden they gave him one of those like, the, instead of walking up fucking Air Force One, they gave him one of those seats that old people use in the stairs, yeah. and they just. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, you, you're, you're not allowed to walk up the steps anymore. <laughs> yeah, or they turn the cameras off. They go, like, oh, "Bye, I'm getting on the stairs now, everybody." Uh, what a fucking joke! Um, all right, uh, here's another thing that's terrifying me right now because I'm about to get on a plane on Friday to fly to Chicago, which, mm-hmm. by the way, may be having a fucking snowstorm. Nothing worse than flying, knowing you're going to be flying into a snowstorm. Uh, for a right. gig and oh icing planes and runway slippery all this shit going to my head but have you guys ever experienced severe turbulence i mean i've experienced turbulence uh i think the most is like i got i got jolted out of my seat about eight or nine inches up in the air and because i i didn't have my seat belt on I just sat back down and we hit a pocket and i literally came out of my seat all the way my ass was like a, a parallel with the uh armrest wow that's about the most i've ever experienced jeez you have I've never belt on did you have your no, seat belt on andy right. no i did not i did not I, i'd gone to the bathroom i came back i sat down and i was just sitting there didn't think about it and then we hit that pocket and i was like Ooh, and i mean my head almost hit the the top of the the uh, overhead thing oh shit <laughs> that's crazy i was like damn i couldn't imagine <laughs> I've never been on a plane. Uh, I'm afraid of heights too, so that probably be terrifying to me. I mean, I've I've hit a Greenville pothole, you know, but that's about it. No, I've I've never been on a plane. And you never been on a plane well, yet, Chris? Mm. Oh, I'm shit. gonna have to be sedated, like you know what I mean. I'm gonna have to be sedated. Uh, what was? Uh, oh, go ahead with the the uh, story well, about that but, but well by the way i'd have you know your your idol uh eric myers uh mm-hmm. who was very terrified of flying uh would not like he couldn't fly so that that hampered some of his uh his touring ability but he would have to drive everywhere because he anxiety wise right. he was terrified of flying so at least you guys share that in common um but you know there was actually matthew mcconaughey was on a flight with his wife camilla and uh, they're on their way to uh, a Lufthansa flight on their way to, to Germany and severe turbulence. People got fucked up. And usually the people who get fucked up are obviously the, the, the flight attendants because they're walking around right. or, you know, or, or how, how many times you've been on a flight, well, except for Chris, how many times you've been on a flight where, you know, these people just like walking around and meandering, you know, and, you know, yeah. uh, I, I me, mean, fuck that. I get in my seat unless I have to piss and I hate it. When, every time I go piss, I'm like, let me hurry up because my luck, the, the turbulence will hit when i'm taking if you mean to piss right. ha- if that happens when you're in the fucking bathroom it's so it's, it's horrible. so small it's in horrible. there it's i mean you know it's like this little it's, box here i'm still amazed that's right if you ever had to take a shit on a plane it's almost like trying to take a shit in this box that we're in on this screen because i don't know how any i'm all, like i said i'm pretty i mean i'm wide i'm thick but i'm five eight five nine you know i can't imagine a guy six three having to take a shit in there and trying to wipe his ass without getting it all over the place um but uh yeah Lord. so they were talking about it and and there was another story uh ben pulled it up but former white house official killed after a business jet hit turbulence uh, yeah i didn't know about head- this until you until i you said, said something about the yeah. story i was like so she got killed but it, it was a private jet so obviously yeah. it sounded like from what i read they weren't wearing their seat belt like i wasn't they were probably just hanging out i mean think about it. if you've ever been in a private jet which i don't know if you ever have you know I'm not going to sit in my seatbelt and stay buckled in, you know, when I got a couch sitting right there and all. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to sit, I'm going to play racquetball and shit. It's a fucking private right. jet. Uh, <laughs> you know, I sit there, play some fucking tennis, a couple rounds of golf. Um, yeah, dude. Yeah. I, listen, sad, I, 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 there was a point in time years ago, I had three flights in a row, three flights in a row uh, that had really bad, ter- like shit opening up fucking f- like, and the worst part was like two hours of blah, 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 blah. 
And I, I, when I got off that plane, I was like the Pope. I kissed the fucking ground. I was like, and I didn't fly. I purposely didn't fly for almost eight months to a year after that. Cause I was just, there's no oh, fucking wow. way. And, 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 well. and every, and then now a buddy of mine, who's a, who's a, a like a hypnotherapist has basically taught me that whenever it gets like that, just picture you're on a bus on the road and all the bumbling and stuff is like that. It's just, you're on, you know, you're not going to actually f- fall 30,000 feet. And my buddies who are all pilots uh, have suggested to me, it's impossible for turbulence to bring a plane down. So all I do is remember, remember that shit. And I'm going to have to be remembering it this week when I get on a fucking plane uh, to <laughs> Chicago. But yeah, that, that sucks right. about that lady that died because her kid and her husband were on the plane with her. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, and, and all the ways to go. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's I mean, just crazy. Uh, I've never even heard of something like that. Honestly, that's. I was like, wow! I didn't. You know, that never crossed my mind. It's just probably one of those freak things. She got jolted around mm-hmm. and hit her head. From what I read, just right, the right. You know, just one of those weird fluke timing things. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, it's mm-hmm. horrible. All right, here's our segment. Did you hear? These are stories from around the world and here in this country. And we don't know if you heard it or not, but our first story, Hershey's faces backlash over putting a trans woman on a candy bar. And, uh, boy, yep, I saw that you know, when it came out, uh, last week, matter of fact, uh, cause my, uh, co-host on my podcast, Jody is a big Reese's guy. And he uh, was talking with Hershey's about doing some commercials or some things for them on TikTok and back and forth. And then he saw that he's like, Oop, I'm out. Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, I think, you know, I get the understanding that if, if, okay, so if a guy transitions to be a woman and he want, they, they want to be considered a woman, Mm -hmm. God bless. But you know, the issue, the issue is there is like, I'll be respectful. You know, if if I could 99% of the time you could tell it's a guy, right? I mean, you know, except for the girl, the, 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 the chick from Arizona who won Miss America for you like last year was fucking beautiful. I mean, oh my God, the last time I was fooled, fooled like that was when I was in South Beach on ecstasy, but we won't discuss right. that. But, you know, uh, it was a fucking moment. You know, it was a trial moment. Is that a dick? Um, so, you know, <laughs> and, you know, you're so high on ecstasy, you're like, ah, mm, ah, no, I can't. I won't do it. But, um, <laughs> But, you know, that's another fucking story. But, but you know what I mean? There's a very small fraction of the population. So, but, you know, it, listen, if somebody say, I'm going to, I'm not going to be an asshole and go do, you know, I'm not going to be a schmuck. Yeah. Uh, but the, the issue that most people have is don't tell me, like, you can't force people how to speak. And that's the right. big issue. You can't tell somebody you have to use these words when you talk to me. You know, just as much right. as I, I can't tell people to call me King Dougie. You know, I can't, you know what I mean? I just, it's just, I, it's unrealistic. It's really unrealistic to expect other people to handle things the way you want them to. Right. I mean, can we agree? Yep. Um, now, Hershey's, I'm on a diet, so it's easy to walk away from Hershey's, um, you know, but uh, I, you know, I love a Hershey's almond, Hershey's, you know, with Hershey's you know, chocolate bar. Oh, oh yeah, fucking the refrigerated Reese's, Reese's <laughs> cup, yeah. refrigerated. Yep. I mean, I mean, that's oh. not a bad choice. Yeah. <laughs> <not a> <laughs> And I tell people anything's got to be refrigerated Oreos, double stuff in the fridge. Oh, freezer. Right. Oh my God, dude. Uh, but you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of like, you know, people are saying this kind of like we did another story to talk about Well, we're coming up to it. Uh, it's like the, you know, the woman in sports, you know, is that a woman? Yeah. Well, I guess it's a way of, you know, making the transgender community recognize that way. But, uh, I don't know if I still was still fat and, wanted to be fed i don't know if i would walk away from hershey's uh because Look, of this i think women should have the choice in women's sports to be able to make this determination but at the same time let's say the guy the the the, per, the person had their ding dong cut off and you know the whole ding operation dong. and everything and whatever i don't know how clean or dirty we can be on here so <laughs> i forget ding dong <laughs> but uh you know, and they do the whole operation with, and on hormones. It's like, okay, well, can they still compete in women's sport at that point when they become a full fledged woman? But then there's also the argument: well, they're biologically male by design, with more muscle mass by design, natural by design, than women. So they do; they still will have an advantage. I don't agree with that. 
I think it should just be purely 100% men and purely 100% women the way you were born genetically because that's how basically the, the, the rules in most sports, and especially women's sports, are designed around, right? Right. You know, is the yeah. abilities, physically ability, and we know women have different physical abilities than men. So you get into this really weird gray area, but as a, just because you put on a wig and makeup, no, you should not be allowed to compete in women's sport as a man. Yeah. I mean, I, I think with like the swimmer that came out, you know, a year or two ago, I mean, it, it, obviously he's, all he did was take some hormones. He still got his cock and balls, you know, right. I, I mean, he looks like a dude with long hair. He looks like, a, he looks like somebody who was a, in a band in the eighties, uh, in glam rock, but you know, I think that it should be, you know, uh, if the like it's track and field, that's a big thing. They keep showing these high school athletes as these two black kids that transition that are just tearing up the track and field of, of amateur right. sports. And uh, I, I just, it's just not fair to to a woman. Now, if this person yeah. has transitioned and went through the whole thing, and you know, and uh, yeah, you know, but this was the case of the U.S. powerlifting uh, now must allow male athletes to compete against females. Uh, right. in a Minnesota court and uh, people are, uh, what was a spokesman, a woman spokesman for ESPN came out against this, which is interesting. And then, you know, I, I admire the people that can come out against when the majority of people are just trying to go with the flow and they don't want to get anybody pissed off. You know, I, I really celebrate the people that stand up in the drift and say, I don't, I don't, I don't agree. You know what I mean? I, right. I just don't well, agree. I don't agree. Well, I'm, I'm an ex power lifter. I power lifted, uh, professionally and competitively for four and a half years, um, with a WMPF NASA and several other, um, organizations. Uh, and I have an issue because I, I know power lifting and, and power lifting is very, uh, depends on what segments you're in. If you're either in all natural, which I was, and most of them are naturally test you and all that stuff. Um, but this goes back to what kind of my base is. It's like, you know, men inheritedly, and don't get me wrong. There's a lot of strong women out there. If you've ever been around some of them power, strong powerlifting women, holy crap. Some of them can bench and squat more than a dude. So don't get me, don't get it yeah. twisted. Yeah. I still think it should be separated. And, you know, in, in that instance, especially the powerlifting, in my opinion, because even still there's guys that can lift a lot more than women. And some women can't even get up to that level naturally. Okay. Naturally. Right. And I'm not talking on the steroid circuit. I'm talking on the natural circuit that will never be able to probably squat, which I do. I squatted 675, my strongest below parallel in a competition. I don't know too many women naturally that can do that. There may be some out there that can, but I'm not saying I can do it because of a man, but I have seen men be able to do stuff. Women can't is strength wise because they're just, we're yeah. both two different species designed two different ways. On a natural I think, aspect. I think, I think the point, I think a good point is that when it comes to powerlifting, the male density of the bones, et cetera, add yes. to the strength and the durability yes. of powerlifting and say, uh, but like, for example, would I have an issue if, uh, if, uh, if it was golfing, you know, if a guy, a tra woman, transgender, transgender woman, you know, was now golfing, well, that may not be as much, you know what I mean? Cause it's a little more finesse involved let me tell you i'll give you anything to tee off from the ladies tee i need that extra 60 yards yeah. i need that extra 60 yards i'm just telling you I, I, mean, I mean you know what i'm saying but listen there's so much growth in the transgender community we're only maybe a decade or two away where they should have their own like you're saying class you know right, right. instead of exactly. being a woman or male exactly. like let's just have transgender you know yeah you're right i mean and compete Didn't against your have own time i thought i'm sorry i thought they had that in that article actually that there's some people have started making that separate category uh for uh transgender and uh i, I guess non-binary I, I guess that would be the correct one term yeah like but um that, that wouldn't be a bad idea like like look people no. if you want to compete in it compete in it you know what right. i mean this is a class like non-binary you know it's non male non-female and right. if that's the case then males should be able to compete in other words just an open class right yep. like it, yeah, it just like they're like, talking like about an open with, weight fight league. Any any weight, yeah, yeah. And it, man and women could fight. Whatever you it does, yep. you can do whatever. You, as long as you're this weight, under this weight, you can fight. Yeah, you yep. know what I mean. They're, 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 why not? You know what I mean. And then and then now you have now you have not only fairness because everybody knows what they're getting into, right? Yep. Uh, and they, there may be in women, there may be women to say, "Fuck it, I'm going to beat the pants out of fucking Andy because he's only squatting six seventy five. That pussy." Uh, you know, I'm going to go after hey, him. Bring I it can on. Fucking... I, I can, 
hey, they probably can. They probably can. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just, that's it. Because that would be that, that would be amazing, right? Like, you know, to mm -hmm. me, if a transgender woman, right, a guy, somebody who's a man that's now a woman, beats a man in a squat contest, God bless. I mean, fucking hell, mm -hmm. congratulations. You are, you have reached the pinnacle of becoming a real man. You beat the fuck out of a man. You know what yeah. I mean? So uh, why not? All right. Uh, moving on, Elon Musk says that AI robots will eventually outnumber people. It's not even clear what an economy means at that point. Uh, I mean, why not? Why wouldn't we not think that? And no, listen, no. I'm, I'm all. I'm, there's a lot of people that we should just eliminate uh, to make room for some of these robots. I mean, let's face it. <laughs> I mean, let's. You know, everybody should be able to give. An, everybody should be able to put in a list of five people they just completely despise, and they have they <laughs> add no value to America or the or, or humanity in any way. Every person yep. on earth should go, hey, give us five people of people that you know are just complete pieces of shit, and we're going to replace yeah. them with a fucking uh, a robot. A robot. <laughs> that's that's an interesting that's an interesting spin on it. I mean, <laughs> yeah. but no, I agree. I mean, yeah, of course that's going to happen. I mean, we know that's coming. That's that's coming down. Now, will we see it in our generation? I don't know. You know, but yeah. I mean. Well, look, is, look at the advancement in happen. sex robot. You remember back 20, oh, no. 10, 20 years ago, if you wanted to fuck a doll, you had to blow her up and, you know, look, look like a <laughs> fucking balloon That's with true. her mouth open. Nowadays, you look at him, you're like, God damn, maybe I will fucking leave my wife and buy that one. Doesn't, you know, my buddy used to have an old joke. He used to say, you know, you can get one of those sex robots and you pay an extra 10 grand for one that talks. He's like, fuck that. I pay 10 grand for one that didn't talk. Um, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, Jason got yeah, a good joke, buddy. But, uh, yeah, uh, you know, listen, when, when, uh, when they had the rules come out about, you know, uh, minimum wage, you know, like, oh, we got to pay these fast food workers yeah. minimum wage and look how quickly McDonald's and everybody started automating their fucking burger flipping oh, yeah. processes. Uh, Dude, I yeah. stopped out of McDonald's on the road, uh, about a month ago and I haven't gone to a McDonald's in forever. I had to use the bathroom so bad. It was late at night and it was open. So I, I cruised in there. And I just figured, I was like, I'll grab a Coke or some fries, you know, something for using the bathroom. That's just kind of the way I am. So I went over and I stood there and I saw some people in the back and I was like, can I order? They go, oh, everything's automated. And there's, only, there's only two yeah. of us. So you had to go to that tablet and order all your stuff yourself and do it all yourself. And I was like, um, no, but okay. And they're like, and they're like, it's just us three. And I was, so I said, so you can't run the race. Like, nope, we're not allowed to after a certain point. I'm like, oh, okay. And, it, and the drive-thru is that way now, too. So now they yeah. want you to do the app, and then you pull up what's your order number, then you pull around, and they hand it to you. So they're down to, like, two or three employees in McDonald's now. It's weird. Okay. Uh, it's still McDonald's. That's what I don't understand. It's like, come on. Yeah. Yeah, just have some poor person about their shelving and making the damn food. Uh, nothing worse than when I go into a fast food restaurant, and I'll walk up, and let's say I'm the person taking the order. They're like, may I help you? Like, well, why don't you fucking look at me first so we make sure we don't screw up my order, dummy? Um, <laughs> which would, which by the way, uh, because of this diet I'm on, no more fast food. I miss Arby's. Arby's, I miss you. Oh. Oh, why can't Arby? Why can't Arby's like hire a transgender woman to be there? We have the meats. Well, not really anymore. Mm -hmm. um, really. You know what I mean? <laughs> you know that'd be funny. Transgender. Uh, we have the meats. Well, I used mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. um, that would keep me from going to McDonald's. But I can't eat there anymore. Yeah. Uh, I said this. Uh, I've said this um, back when uh, Summer of Love in 2020. But Walmart set to close all stores in Portland amid record-breaking retail, retail theft. How are things working out for you, Portland? Yeah. How you guys like that, that free going? living? How's that going yeah. for you? It's a fucking ghost town, Portland. I'm surprised this hadn't this hadn't happened sooner. I, I just it surprised. I, I, I used to work at Walmart. This is no surprise. Uh, let me let me tell you one story. Uh, when I worked at Walmart, and um, it's been, I was like 22. I'm like, mm, how old am I now? 38. That's how bad I don't know offhand. Um, when I worked there, they had they still had a tube TV somewhere in that store, and uh, these guys went and got the TV, opened the box, right? They take the TV out take the box to the meat department and load that bad boy full of steak. So probably hundreds of dollars worth of steak and it's Walmart steak. So it's still not a good deal, but anyway, so they wheel this, this steak TV to the front and they, you know, they're not going to pick up a TV. They scan their TV 
And then this lady walks by and she goes, Hey, your TV's bleeding. Blood was pouring out of the bottom of this television. That's how they got busted. So I'm not surprised. That must have been That's a cheap ass fucking TV to, 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 where the TV costs less than the fucking meat. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was like the one tube TV in the corner that I didn't even know they had. Like flat oh, screens have been a thing. <laughs> That's fucking but. funny. Your TV's bleeding. And all of a yeah. sudden, the fucking Christians, oh my God, it's a sign of Christ. <laughs> TV's bleeding. Right. Holy shit, right. the man, he's coming back. We're saved. <laughs> yeah. Oh, fuck. Uh, but it's uh, no surprise, man, with all these, you know, the state saying, hey, you know, they can, people can walk out with X amount and don't stop them, let them. I'm like, that all comes back to somebody and us, the consumers and the bottom line. Mm-hmm. And they're just going to, you know, I'm surprised they haven't thought to shut down the stores faster. More and more stores are leaving places like Seattle. You know, yeah. Seattle's another place. I had friends that were like, when this was all going down, I'm like, you guys, you know, I remember there was something that happened on the news. I go, hey, do you hear that? They're like, what is it? I'm like, it's, it's the sound of a thousand for sale signs going up in Seattle. Oh, you don't know right. what you're talking about. Well, fuck, and guess what? You know, um, it's 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 falling apart. You know, there's a Harvey's Comedy Club used to be in Portland closed. You know, yeah. I mean, I don't know who the fuck would want to do stand up, you know, unless you're a woke ass fucking comic. You know, there's no way you oh, can I've say had buddies anything. leave there and go to New York that left Portland and went to New York. They're like, I got to get out of here. They're like, yeah, I it's go. a it's a shit town. Um, and, you know, even in California, Newsom now has said he's not going to deal. He's not going to Walgreens. They're not going to deal with Walgreens because they wouldn't sell the the uh, the abortion pill, you know. So, you know, th- th- I mean, Newsom's a fucking idiot. I mean, you're going to yeah. you're going to get rid of like, Can you imagine living in California as tough as it is now with the earthquakes, the fires, the fucking homeless, all this fucking the expenses of living there. And now you can't even go to a Walgreens soon. CVS, you're you going to limit like it, to, to C- California. We're a decade or two away of California just becoming a ghost town, too. Um, yeah. And, you know, listen, everybody's leaving these fucking cities. I mean, it's just it's yeah, just the, everybody. California, South here Carolina. In yeah. You, I mean, stat, look at look what happened in Atlanta with those people attacking that police station that's being built. I mean, did you see this yeah. shit this week? That was all these that, fucking hoople heads. It was it was actually a training a headquarters areas for training It was for police. Yeah, they're training, building it. Uh, per, yeah. And, and these they guys, they all got to... and I'm like, I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, we're letting this go on. I, listen, shoot the kill at this point. You know what I mean? Like I said, thin the herd. Anybody wants to be, mm-hmm. there was a story I read t- today about, there was like a, a 14 year old kid punched a cop. Get, just the the cock the, the cop, the back of the head and the cop punched him back. And there was somebody going, how dare the cop punch him? Fuck you. I don't care if somebody's yeah. 14, you punch a cop. You deserve an ass beating. Be, you know what I mean? Agreed. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, as long as you don't step on his neck, God forbid. Right. Um, right. Speaking of stupid criminals, bamboozled carjackers end up empty handed after trying to take a Houston man's car at gunpoint. Uh, funny shit. The guy, the guy, they come up to the guy, they ask for his car keys. The keys are in the before, you know, where are they at? And meanwhile, one of the guys steals the bag and runs off with it. Well, the keys are in the bag, the bag stupid. Bag. Yeah. <laughs> and, their location, and, and all keys are now location related to the car <laughs> so he couldn't start the car <laughs> yeah and then it was a great story because then the guy's chasing the guy who took the bag the original yep. criminal starts shooting at the guy that he's trying to steal the car from the guy his partner hears gunfire freaks out drops freaks the bag out. thinks he's yep. being shot at i mean yep. unbelievable <laughs> i mean that's the one only good thing about these fucking criminals being so young and stupid. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, uh, this is into, we got a couple stories left, but, uh, this was interesting. Uh, uh, laughter at Russia's Lavrov says war launched against us. Uh, you, I mean, this is great when the world recognizes bullshit, play the, play the clip, Ben. You know, uh, the war, uh, which, uh, we are trying to stop and which was launched against us using the Ukraine. <laughs> U- Fuck you, people. asshole. Uh, what a moron. It influenced, influenced, what a moron. influenced uh, the uh, policy of Russia, including energy policy. Uh, and the Yeah, cut it. So, you know, blunt- again, you know, we're trying to stop this war by we're trying to stop the war by sending more and more unwilling, fucking un- incapable Russian 
young men to to die in Ukraine. Uh, well, they're running yeah. out of young people. They've they've hit a fifty year mark of less um, people having kids over the last 40, 50 years, and they're out of a deep well of kids and young adults to basically pull as if they were going to draft to put in to the army to keep fighting. They're basically at the bottom of the well. Yeah. Uh, you know, you keep hearing, st here's the thing about this. You don't know what's true or not true and all the shit you hear, but I mean, it's a big clusterfuck over there. And the big concern is whether China is going to go in and help with arms to Russia and, and give them certain weaponry. It's a, it's a proxy war. It's a testing ground. You know, we're yep. testing our weapons and listen, if anything we've learned is Russia is not the fucking army we thought they were. You know, at this point, NATO should just back, just get it together and fucking go evade Russia and get it over with at this point. Uh, I mean, fuck Russia. I mean, you know, I don't even like white Russian drinks. You know, I don't even <laughs> like Russian dressing. Right. Fuck Russia. Right. I mean, right. you know, the only thing I like about Russia is Russian women. Some of the hottest women on the on earth, that sexiest women. Oh, my God. Tall, lengthy, that fucking accent. So you want to fuck? Yes, I do. Uh, you know, <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, our last story is a Florida woman calls for sugar daddy mama appreciation day. And this can only happen in Florida. And uh, you got to see this crash test. I mean, she goes to a zoning board meeting in Florida, it has nothing to do with trying to have certain days. But she wants a sugar daddy, sugar mama. Look at I mean, those look things. At Are those like ZZs or XXs? Look at her. Look at her. Okay. Test the oh, mic. Voice stupid. is the worst. Your name and her voice is record. the worst. Wait, did she stop? And cut it, hold it there for a second. And look at the guy. Look at the guy. You know the guy's Rip. going, yeah, I'm fucking her. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I know you're all laughing at me for fucking her, but would you rather me be fucking Maud? You know what I mean? I could be fucking this train wreck. But I'm, I'm you know, but let, I mean, look, listen hey. to this fucking Perfect face. Okay. I just want to say good evening, everybody. Everybody's looking absolutely fabulous. A little bit serious, but. I am here as a concerned citizen and voter. You guys might not be aware, but Florida has the largest per capita population of sugar daddies in the U.S. Hold it there for a second, but Miami. we also have the worst education system for bimbos who can't read their own fucking writing. Oh, yeah. He probably wrote it for her. He look at it. That's his face. He's like, I can't believe she can't oh, yeah. fucking read what I wrote. Yeah. Oh, he's in, he used to be an attorney or you say he used to be a CEO guy and he wrote it for her and handed it to her. And she goes, okay, I'll just read what you type, babe. <laughs> I don't know about that. This guy, this guy used to own a fucking, a, a trucking company, you know, or he's a fucking taxi cab driver, saved all his money, sold his medallion before Uber. And now he's banging this big fucking freak. All right, roll it, roll it a little longer. Cause this is, this is beach and Boca lies the most concentrated populace of these aged benefactors sugar daddies both gay and straight and yes even sugar mommies <laughs> are responsible for college educations cars homes rents jets birkins and the occasional body enhancement but not me though i'm all natural <laughs> yeah all natural supporting our local economy <laughs> yeah cut it all right so um you know Occasional. all natural those <laughs> titties are so time. big they show up on fucking google earth um Jeez. you know and that happens in florida you know these fucking women like that these strippers and these prostitutes slash strippers will go after these old men and look at that guy he does and yeah. you see he's sitting there going oh god i hope my friends don't see this he's but you know what i yeah, exactly. Like, man, he's each just his own, but each his own. But what is what is up? What, what made him think? Oh, we're gonna go get a sugar daddy date. What sense does that make? Zero. You know, to me, it's obviously somebody's just trying to get you know clicks and likes and shit. Uh, but right. the guy, but the guy, the funniest thing about this is this guy is this innocent bystander. Like, is he? Is you know, it's, it's his facial expressions the whole time are almost like this seemed like a good idea, and we thought about it. You know what I mean? But the yeah. more she talks, the more I look like a complete fucking buffoon, you know. Oh, dude! And yeah, he was he was he was rolling hard on a hit of X and probably banging her. And they're like, she's like, he's like, yeah. And she brought up the idea, and she's just riding him. He's like, whatever you want, whatever. Yeah, whatever you want, baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Must I mean, he probably been. didn't hear anything. The titties were close. You know, he couldn't hear shit with his face between those titties. Uh, <laughs> anyway, 
So welcome back to Florida. All right, it's time to play Let's Associate, fellows. Uh, this is where I bring up a word or phrase, and then you guys can quickly share with me uh, your first thought or story that comes to mind. We're going to start with Chris since he has cerebral palsy. Uh, okay. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna start with him. Uh, the first word is persistence. Persistence. Oh, gosh, persistence. Um, I have to use a lot of persistence. Uh, it's hard to get up steps. Um Comedy Zone has four flights of stairs. Show starts at eight. I got there at one <laughs> o'clock in the afternoon, and uh, it took me a while to get there. A lot of persistence. No joke on that, Andy. No. Yeah, same word. Persistence, Andy. Yeah, same word. Persistence. Uh, annoying. It can be annoying, you know. Yeah. But I mean, persistence is one of those things that you can be annoying, but you can also be. Um, persistence for me is like a especially in like sales and in, in here in comedy it's like you want to be just persistent enough to where you're in front of people but not to where you're just annoying like to bookers and to different places you know you just want yeah. to be you want to kind of be there but not be too much where you're just getting on their nerve like oh god they're here again it's like you know I roll exactly and stuff. in the world of business we used to consider it politely aggressive right. um uh you start with this word andy cheaters cunts all right, there you go. <laughs> cheaters. <laughs> no, yes, uh, I cheaters are not good at all. Matter of fact, speaking of cheaters, I just wrote my check to my ex-wife, the last one I'll have to ever write her. Congratulations. Uh, on child support and everything. So thank you. I wrote that today. We no longer will be giving that woman any more of my money ever. That's fucking and great. And that cheater is now 100% paid in full and gone. It's amazing that you're able to cut it off. You had a good attorney that it not, this just, it just didn't go into perpetuity. This is something you would just, there was a, there was a certain amount. There was a date you had to reach. Yeah, it was a date. There were some fees from some, from attorney fees and stuff. My son, my son graduated this summer. So child support fell off and there was just some little bit of money left over for a case that we were arguing a couple of years ago that Got one it. of them, which I won. And, and by the way, did Long you put anything short. in the memo being the last check? Did you put anything in the memo session section? Like last check, bitch. Shove this one up your I ass. I wanted to. I thought <laughs> about it. I but I took the high road and just basically mm. just said, you know, basically put in the letter. You know, this is done. We have fulfilled, and you are now on your own in perpetuity, <laughs> and yeah. we won't have any more contact. So Got I took the high road like Chris Rock, and I just I did it professional yeah. and then sent it out. You'll Chris, talk about cheaters. it in your special. Cheaters. Um, I've dated a lot of those. Made a lot of bad decisions. A uh, girl I used to date was like, uh, I figured she wanted to try new things like restaurants, just dicks. It was just dicks, <laughs> just you know? Dicks. So, uh, yeah, her panties had a sign-in sheet. I don't know why I signed it. Uh, yeah, cheaters. Uh. <laughs> uh, all right, Chris, start with this one. Best friend. Best friend. Oh, man. I've got some... <sighs> I've got some interesting best friends. I got a best friend one time. Uh, we were walking to McDonald's and it was uh, in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, I can't walk fast. I got cerebral palsy. So I wait on the other dude, the goo dude with the good legs. I follow his lead, you know. And um, we're walking across the street and he makes a bad call. And here comes a car that's not even paying attention. And luckily they start to slow down, but I got hit. So oh, I go. Shit shooting off this way and my friend being the good best friend that he is starts running like this cutting the air in front of him to run faster to get to mcdonald's you know like we talked about earlier because i assume you know chris might not be okay but he needs like a quarter pounder and he never came back so yeah oh, uh, fuck that guy god yeah. damn my yeah. best good friend okay <laughs> andy What's that? I'm sorry. I got lost in the story. Best friend. Best friend. <laughs> best friend. Best friend. Best <laughs> friend. Uh, best friend. Uh, I've had I've had a lot of best friends. I don't consider people. I, I hate the word best friend. I really do. Because, I mean, I've got a lot of good friends and I've got a lot of close friends. Uh, not a lot, but now it's down to like five. I mean, first, you know, it's like, oh, you're my best friend. I've never really liked that term. Yeah. It's like saying that you're better than this person or whatever. 
I, I really don't like the term because I've got some friends yeah. that you would consider a best friend that are actually probably exceed a best friend level. So I just, right. I, I'd, I'd rather just kind of not use that term. Gotcha. So best friend for you is more of a label for a friend than it is yes, in, it's it's for one label. person. Yeah. They're one of yeah. my best friends. Yeah. They're of, best yeah, friends. Yeah. That's a good thing. Yeah. Uh, I can't, I'd be remiss if I did say this. One of my best friends uh, and my comedy partner in the Ebony and Olive comedy team, uh, we lost a great guy uh, a week or so ago, my buddy Chris Priester. Chris Priester, the teacher, uh, 51 years old, surprising, fell, died in his sleep, uh, and great guy. And uh, he was a best friend because we saw eye to eye on a lot of things. And uh, I'm going to miss you, Unc. And you'll uh, never forget your brother. All right. Um, uh, Andy, you start with this one crushing. Crushing. Uh, the term is uh, it now used to be for me in golf. And now it's about comedy and crushing a joke or an audience or a set. Um, you know, I try not to use that word lightly. You know, uh, I, I don't throw it around a lot, but, you know, I do like to see when someone crushes, uh, especially someone new in comedy. And I, I like watching guys crush an audience and crush a joke. You know, that's that's really it's really fun, you know, to yeah. sit there and watch your buddies and fellow comedians like finally work a joke out to where it just crushes a room. Got it, Chris. Yeah, same thing. Comedy, it's crushing. Like it, it doesn't happen all the time, but when it happens and you know it happened, it's like the best feeling in the world. It's like, man, I crushed because, like last week, I, I did a mic, and crush is not the word I would use. I would say not even lightly dense, and it was just like, oh, geez, somebody get me out of here, you know. And uh, but yeah, when you crush, it's great. That is for sure. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I would add to that. It's always better when somebody else says you crushed. It's never yes, good. 100%. Even if you had, you can't be like, I crushed. crushed. Yeah. 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 I hate when uh, people say I crushed. They'll be like, Ugh. it just, it just yeah. comes off, comes off I, weird or dirty. Does it not? I always say, I just, I did all right. And they're like, oh, you do, you crushed. And I'm like, oh, thanks. You know, yeah, it's I a, feel it's better weird. Be yeah. I'm I'm very It'll humble be, with that. I've never been that person. Yeah, and nothing more nothing more disgusting when somebody I crushed, and then you watch a video of me like that's fucking crushing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> crushed yeah, their enthusiasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, exactly. Um, all right, our last words. Uh, give it to Chris. Well traveled. Well traveled. Uh, that's something I am not. I don't know nothing about nothing. <laughs> like uh, me and you, we went and found a Bucky's. Holy crap, if you've never seen this magical place. Yeah. Um one of my favorite uh, places to stop. I I love Bucky's. Uh God, I kind of want to tell that Bucky's joke. You want me to tell the Bucky's joke? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. This is a terrible joke. I said, Yeah, um, I get PTSD from going to Bucky's because it reminds me of my ex-girlfriend. There's a buttload of places to pump full of a bunch of random dicks, and you can eat there for eight dollars working on that one but that's my bucket that's a wonderful wonderful place and that's and like by the way when you, beyond, yeah when and when we went there after the gig at when you and i and, and uh mm -hmm. and jacob went there after our fayetteville gig uh that was the first time i was ever in a bucky's myself and i had that brisket sandwich which was uh delicious it was amazing uh, yeah i would go to like i'll go back there just to go to bucky's we don't have to go to do comedy i could care less it's bucky's. <laughs> it's great wonderful place <laughs> and Andy, well traveled. Well traveled. Uh, like the chick in that last video, she's well traveled, is she not? <laughs> <laughs> Mileage. Mileage. Yeah, it, wouldn't it be? Wouldn't it be great if people were like automobiles and you get to see all the fucking mileage on them? Miles, like, <laughs> you know that lady. Oh, like how many owners? Like you get to see how many owners, how many people banged her right. over the years. Right. You know, it'd be like, fuck, you know, what she's I mean? refurbished. If you went out with that woman now, that'd be like buying a 1987 fucking Corvette with fucking 300,000 miles on it. Yeah, the airbags <laughs> are still keep your fucking name. Well, that's all we got time for here on the Wake Up Late with Dougie Show. I want to thank Chris Wilson and Andy Gunner for joining thank us so here much. today, fellas. Uh, Andy, how can people uh, find out more about you? Uh, they can go to andygunnan.com on my website. Uh, all my shows are on there. 
Uh, you can see what I'm doing. I'm touring all over the Midwest. I got about 16, 17 shows coming up across the country, everywhere from Panama City, Florida, to Louisiana, to Ohio, to Illinois. So just check it out. Follow me. And you can go in there and get one of these Sugar Hugger shirts there you go. as well in my store. Chris? Um, yeah, just go to uh, chriswilsoncomedy.com. All my socials at Chris Wilson Comedy. You can catch me at any Walmart or Waffle House around the upstate. You know, I'm going to do a tour there. So uh, thanks for having me. Great having you, buddy, and keep up the great work. Thank As you. for me, this weekend, I'm going to be at CG's Comedy Club in Bolingbrook, Illinois, Friday and Saturday night shows. Please come out and said, say you're here to see me, everybody. Uh, and that'll be great. We appreciate it. Don't forget to follow us and subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Wake Up Late with Dougie Show. Need you to subscribe to my YouTube channel at Dougie Almeida. I uh, appreciate that. Uh, that is building up nicely. And aside from that, everybody, God bless. Treat everybody as if they are your friend and best friend. Uh, and crush it when you can. Don't be a cheater. And be persistent when it comes to the good things in life. God bless. Take care. And we'll see you next time here at the same spot.